In the next half hour I'm going to explain how I've painted this simple scene of the mill here next to a lavoir. Um, one of the problems you're going to have as an artist is to combine a landscape of trees in the front, the trees in the back without making a mess of the building. So I'm going to go step by step, hopefully you can avoid the, the problems that entails. I'm going to explain how I get a little bit of reflection and line up the reflections of the bridge and indeed the house in the bits of what you see um, and how to really simplify a subject which could easily confuse um, if you're you know too fussy about every single timber this is really just a, a quick impression trying to capture the spirit <laughs> start with the bridge and use this as a sort of focal point over to the left and I'm just very lightly planning with some broad sweeps so that we get some water in the foreground And I'll be carrying on to this page. Indicating some trees. And then we're going to get the middle in here. I think what's going to happen is the gable is going to go off the top because really it's the focus is on the bridge and the little stream running through it. So first of all comes in about here. And then the gable is going to go up above that. I'm told this is a very old mill. So if my lines go a bit wonky, I've got an excuse ready. So I planned it with that pencil, coming in with a bit more detail. I think what I'll do with this drawing is just plot it very lightly and then I'll put some washes on with watercolour to establish the all the surroundings. Because we're in spring we've got some bare trees. Add a bit of rustic contrast. So we're just looking at the main shapes. Establishing a few interesting angles. And because we're sitting so close, the very the angles get more extreme. the shutters and the windows, get the main shapes. the stonework is beautiful here with local very gore stone of sandstone mainly so we've got some very 
nice angles from all the timbers underneath this overhang. The advantage of these little clutch pencils, I'm using um, a very soft lead, they come with HB leads, but you can get softer leads up to 4B, is that you always keep a nice thin line, which for architecture is very useful, rather than the traditional pencil, which will get blunt. Lose precision. A grassy bank, a few more of these. Slightly simplify and compress the composition to make painting work. So, we actually get a little bit of reflection coming down from the from the house here into the water. So, what I'm going to do is maybe just reduce the greenery so we see a bit more reflection then we've got the stones of the lavage where the washing was done probably still is who knows so we'll get a little bit of the bridge reflecting and we'll get a little bit of tree reflecting down in here and the house. Let's work on that in a minute. So now I've got the main shape I can build outwards. My idea is to come across onto the second page, just get the sweep of the stream as it comes around this little bend. got some pretty much bare trees a lot of bare trees up here I'm not sure how many I'm going to put in but let's just pick out a few main shapes again just simplify to capture the character of the place so there's probably two or three trees missing from this group a couple more here will do And sometimes if you sketch the main ones, you can imply more with a few dry brush strokes in due course. So we're pretty much ready to paint. Check if there's any other details I need to include. I think. I think that's it for the drawing. So we've just got the main shape with the bridge. Um, what we have got at the moment with the sun raking at the end of the afternoon is a nice shadow on the inside of the bridge here, flat water. And that shadow is reflected. So we get some nice little triangles under the bridge, which is a very simple sort of square set bridge. I don't know how old the bridge is, but um, probably not as old as the mill. some paint on the go just do some simple washes so so when it comes to the painting of a scene like there's any uh, scene where I've got a building I will always do the landscape first um, one of the reasons for that is you can't really paint a building and then put a tree on top in watercolor because the uh, particularly light leaves branches they won't show up if it's in a silhouette you can but so if we paint all the scenery behind and in front first then we just put the building into the gaps that remain so I'm going to start in the traditional way by 
creating a, a hang on, creating the sky and then the distant trees. I'm filling up my palette with water so I've got plenty to wash with and I'm just making a very simple sky using ultramarine with a little bit of cyan blue which gives it a hint of turquoise. Now these trees are all dark against the sky so I have no problem just painting right across the whole group like so and I've barely wet the paper I've just with a big sweep of a Chinese brush you can include um, you can get the whole wash on without having to pre-wet it uh, and now because it's damp I'm just going to catch the drips coming down with the tissue and use the wet edge of the sky to paint the very distant trees and for doing the distant trees I'm using indigo which is a very deep blue but when you dilute it right down produces lovely neutral colours and when you add it to a colour like raw sienna which is really a sandy yellow colour you get a very soft grey green so there we go and so I'm just painting that well, again I can paint it over the trees because they're all so dark and because the rest of the paper is dry hopefully this wash won't flow in the wrong place and we've got trees going way into the distance there so these are the furthermost trees and again if the paint puddles I've got the my pad up on an easel so we do tend to bit gravity helping me bringing the paint to the down the paper and so you can get it dripping so just keep your tissue ready not catch any drips when that's dry I'll put the trees on top um, there's another there's a group of trees to the left uh, twiggery of, of trees so I'm just going to indicate that again while the, the sky is still damp so a bit of indigo, a bit of raw sienna and this is really just placing the brush and as I go on what I'm doing is I'm taking the moisture out of the brush so that I can then just bring the drier strokes to the edge of the tree and using the dry brush you can flick outwards and suggest the last few twigs and then when that dries the trunks will be placed on top. So we are ready for the um, foreground now. Let's get some brighter colours. Um, the grass in the foreground is in the sunshine so I'm going to add some lemon yellow to my cyan blue which will produce a nice bright sunny green. Actually not just grass we've got dandelion and nettle and all sorts up here. And again I'm just painting on dry paper and one of the advantages of that is that when I get to the edges of the grass I can do dry brush flicks which is just flicking the brush up and away with some colour and it produces little edges of paint representing the tops of the grasses. It's a very simple trick you can you can use it I can actually paint some grasses into the into the stream in the same way. And again this is a very quick impression so it's not about painting every detail in the landscape. There are some shadows falling into the grass so for the shadows I can either add a bit of indigo as before or even add a little bit of brown by the way of um, burnt umber is, is a good neutral brown to use and then I can just drop in whilst the grass is still dry the little shadows amongst the clumps of grass so what I'm going to do is use the side of the brush here and just do some little soft flicks and you, again with these Chinese brushes you get very naturalist looking natural looking shadows if you go in too wet with the tip of the brush you tend to get very solid shapes which don't look so convincing so you're just trying to get these very natural looking shadows but very very soft side strokes we've even got some something growing around the corner of the mill 
just need a little bit of green it's actually quite dark a plant but I'll just put in some greens here and when I paint the bridge I'll try and leave those greens showing to suggest a little shrub that's actually growing in the gap here meanwhile this is drying so at any stage I want to I can come back and paint the dark trees need a clean up next going to go to a different brush this is where I'm going to use a, um, a detail brush I'm using one of my aquash brushes which has got water in the barrel just means that I've always got a flow and when you've got a small palette like this and you're not in the studio you often need to clean out your last color before you move to the next what I'm going to do now is paint the stone colour, which is a very beautiful ochre colour. Now raw sienna will get a lot of that, but it's not quite orangey enough. So I'm going to add a little bit of cadmium red and yellow. Water it down. Test it. And paint over the whole of the this side of the building. Because I've got dark timbers again on the, in the framework, I don't need to worry about this. I can paint the whole thing in one go. It just makes life so much simpler. And there'll be shadows that I'll be painting into the side of the building here as well. So you can just, it makes it very simple just to put a wash. Again, it's a dry wash. I haven't wet the paper. I've just taken the color and swept it across, just using enough basically getting enough paint on the brush to cover the whole area in one go and there's me saying that whilst I run out of colour I'm just going to come in with a slightly warmer colour as well a bit more orange in it this time and I'm painting back over what I've just done to make some variations in colour You'll, if you look at the building the stones vary from pale to deeper colours and again just a few random variations in colour to set the scene and as it dries, I'll be able to paint the shadows that are falling underneath the building here. And actually, the tree itself and the window ledges are up here throwing soft shadows, but let that dry. Um, I'm looking to see if there's any more of that colour whilst I've got it, and little bits of it, this stone here that's supporting the timber, a bit of this on there. There are hints of it on the bridge, so although the bridge is dark, I'm going to put some of this colour on the bridge, and I might leave a little bit of that showing when I put the dark on top. The other area where we've got some stony colours but not so vibrant are in these stones of the Lavoir down here. So let's just uh, create some warmth. I've got a little bit more warmth than the stones actually have here but it, it means that the paint, the painting as a whole will tie together. Just notice we've got a little bit of warmth in these stones on top of the bridge here too. Well, I missed out a little bit of greenery in this gap, so that's another area. Just going to go into there. There's a little shrub. There's actually a brighter green, so I've just popped that in there. Right. Let's continue with the water. Now, the water, where it's not reflecting the sky, is quite khaki. So I'm going to use some raw sienna and a hint of sap green a hint so in here where the bridge is reflecting we've actually got a shadow on the top of this color but I'm gonna paint this khaki in the water but where we've got some light coming in here I'll leave some gaps so this is not going to be a flat wash this is going to be broken up with some sparkly bits and what I'm going to do now is use the same colour for the reflections. So it's just a raw sienna with a tiny bit of sap green in it. Because where the bridge and the trees and everything else are reflecting, they're not reflecting the colours above. They're, they're actually, the timber here, they're reflecting with this sort of khaki shade. And also where they see bits of the house reflecting in the water. So some bits of khaki basically. And even the tree here, and the tree in here, khaki. Just adding a little bit of burnt umber to the same mixture 
because beneath the bridge we've got the, the shadow that the bridge is throwing into the water here and it's actually a shadow that's on top of a reflection you don't need to worry about that all you need to do is keep looking in the water and see what shapes you see try to keep them organized don't just muddy them and blur them all together look for the shapes look for the edges of the shadows look for the look for the connection above so where we've got a tree trunk here this reflection is the tree trunk below and so on and again tree trunk up above and we've got the reflection down here I'm just going to make that a little bit darker now we can start painting the bridge itself not quite as dark as the shadows I've just done and this is where you're just playing around with the same palette but a little bit more green here and there a little bit more ochre um, I'm going to paint it a little bit lighter than we see it just so it ties in with the house but it's not going to be as light as the house and often when I start a colour like this I'll start it with the palest colour I see and then add deeper shades to it and the advantage of that is you'll get a little bit more depth into all your colours so you sort of adjust the colour as you go start light then just dip into your palette to add a deeper touch here and there and also you create a sort of patina at the same time so when you're painting stonework it starts to look like stonework so here we go and we can p even go back with the odd stroke to represent the odd bit of um, <coughs> Odd bit of masonry. I'll come back to the underneath of the bridge and just keep going along the bridge here with this darker colour. Now if you want to go really dark a very simple formula is to add ultramarine blue to your burnt umber and it will blacken the colour. You'll actually get like at the foot of the, the wall here where it's permanently moist it does go a little bit darker. So there we are that's that little bit of dark and I can add that to other areas too in a minute. So we'll come along the wall do a bit more this is just going to be fading off to the left I'm not it's not a, com a complete painting this is a working sketch it's the sort of sketch I'll take to the studio um, and maybe work up a bigger painting um, with a bit more information from what I've drawn what you have to try and do is retain the immediacy of a drawing like this and a sketch like this done on the site um, you always capture more the mood of a place if you actually sit there listening to the water you know listening to the sounds around and responding directly to the subject matter in front of your eyes so just pick, using that color which I had on the bridge just to, to put some shadows into the stonework here the great thing with these aquash brushes is they have very good tips even though this is the largest type you can get into the detail and I'll be able to paint the tree trunks with it too in a minute so underneath the bridge we have got a mixture of greenery let's go back to that I didn't put that in earlier so I'm going to put in some sunlit green on the bank that we've right through here we've got some very dark shadows where that greenery meets the water down here we've got some very dark shadows under the bridge with this triangular shape and that is re also being reflected over here so I'm trying to paint that into the sort of gaps beneath the grass and we've got a little bit of um, paler grey in this little triangle here What we can also do with a brush like this is just clean this off a little bit, take some lemon yellow and the cyan or bright blue. You can use it, you can use lemon yellow and cerulean blue if you don't have that blue. Just you want to get a lovely grassy, sunny lit green and it's reflecting down here as well. So we'll put some in the water there. And also we can put some little bits of green on top of the wall and into the foliage above the bridge and there's a couple of um, shrubs above the bridge as well in here so I'm just adding 
lemon yellow with a little bit of blue in it just to create a little bit of another layer within the painting so the distant trees these shrubs nearby a few little spots of yellow into the one I painted earlier down here so we've almost got our landscape painted a few greens over here uh, and we can now start doing the building doing the, the detail of the building so we need to do just finish off the trees here which are all pretty much against the light very neutral you can use a little license here and perhaps soften some of the, the shades but with just a bit of burnt umber hints of blue you can create some nice dark browns and again with a good tip on your brush just a round brush does this nicely where you can pick out some trunks pick out some thinner branches and these actually go right off the top of the the, the painting notice also there's often I notice when my students are painting trees they never seem to get the branches overlapping well they are all overlapping so don't worry about this branch going behind the tree on the right and this branch going behind the tree on the left and coming to meet the middle tree there are all sorts of things happening you'll also notice when you do get the Sun falling across the side of a tree that the branches themselves throw shadows across the tree so you've got an excuse to just vary the shades and bring in some darker patches on a branch or on a trunk on top of the, the pale color I started with and these are all just brownie blue mixes sometimes there's a hint of green in there and then we've got some more trunks over here um, and when you've painted some foliage don't just paint the trunks solid put some foliage here so what I've got to do is stop leave a bit of green start again leave a gap keep going it's like weaving you've got to thread your trunks you and branches through the foliage you've got and up here you've got some thinner branches so you can literally just flick them in with the tip of the brush and also even hinted a bit of variety in the green with some very very loose flicks just gives a little body to the what's a sort of a tree which becomes a hedge which becomes a whole load of trees so it's really just to indicate some some form you notice I left a little bit of light a little bit of white paper actually on the top of the stonework of the bridge and down here it's where the sunlight is just catching the bridge and there is a little white line you can trim it down by just coming along again like this but you want to leave a, that little flash of light just to keep the sparkle right we're ready to put some timbers on the house and some shadows into the masonry um, the shadows let's do those first that's where we still want to use the color of the stone so I'm going back to my mixture of uh, cadmium yellow and cadmium red it's mostly yellow just warmed up a little bit and what I'm going to do here is just not dilute it so much and see if this works so when we do the side of this wall here it's important to, to leave some warmth in there so rather than just putting a, for example a bluey or purpley shadow that would kill these ochres if we look at the wall we'll see there is still warmth there so you're basically painting the original palette plus um, well less with less water in it so just a richer mixture of the original palette so the same as this gap in here um, some people prefer to use a flat brush for doing this the little nice flat sables work very well um, as long as you've got a good tip on the brush so you can get a crisp line where required and I'm just going in with a second layer here just in the side here a little bit of extra warm so you can you can chase these shadows straight away as they dry especially when you're working out of doors when everything is drying within seconds a few shadows up underneath the window ledges I'm now going to dilute the color down because what I want to do is put a, a, a softer shadow over the whole wall that's underneath the overhang so now this part of the wall gets a bit more depth than what's above and again that can go on before I pick out the timbers or after to be honest you can once 
a, a wash is dry like this you can put the timbers on top of it or you can paint the timbers and when they're dry you can put a wash over the whole lot it's you've got the freedom to go either way and what I can also do either with this brush or sometimes a little flat brush I'll get one and show you so you get a flat brush and with a flat brush you can just paint individual stones on top of those washes which will give the indication of masonry with very little effort I'm just squeezing the tip of the brush with my thumb actually it wasn't coming up perfectly flat hopefully it will now let's get rid of the other brush and you can just paint I'll do it over here clear you can just paint little rectangles on top of the wash or in the gaps let's do some more in here and one of the tricks here is as you paint the stones is to paint um, a few colors like so and then slightly change color maybe make it a little grayer with a hint of brown in it or a little um, deeper and just go back in and you can do the same sort of trick if you're painting brick walls or um, rendered walls you can go and just create a little bit of variety to suggest the different textures of the whether it's stone or brick or whatever um, there's a grill in here and a window uh, but I'm going to treat it very simply in this sketch just some burnt umber and because it's a square shape square brush is a good tool and it goes right up into the overhang here so I can take the dark right up And in fact, what I've got to do here when I paint the timber is just be careful not to paint them all dark because a lot of the timbers are actually catching the light. They're not all as dark as each other. So occasionally I'll just rinse some of the colour off, keep going with a paler version of the colour. The shutters are catching some sunlight so they're not as solid dark. So just be aware of the different shades you're looking at. And the flat brush again is great for doing these architectural shapes, you know, long thin timbers. Or you know, sh sharp edges in general that you get in architectural features. So all, the, all these timbers are painted in, with very little effort. What I am going to do though is, having picked those out, go back to the, my round brush and just painting in some darker shadows in between the timbers. So, in here, the, the actual joists are protruding from underneath the first floor and the ends of them are catching the light. So, I'm painting the dark in between. And now the dark going slightly below. And just taking a little care with a few of these features makes a huge difference in terms of conveying the overall solidity of a, of a, of a building. And just like I did earlier with the brick wall, oh, sorry, with the stone wall, I'm going to make some slight different shades of brown here. I've just taken another, um, added a bit of red, another brown, brownie red into this, so I can produce some slightly different shades of brown. So the underneath of these timbers is a little bit darker than the sides. So I sketch them with the first colour, I come in with the second. And we'll fade away there. There's actually a tree coming in here that's only starting to bud, but I might indicate that in a second. Um, again, darker window in here. And in this window, um, I'm going to just suggest some darker paint. They're all in shadow here, so it's just dark on top of dark, just again to create some texture. There's another timber in here which I didn't draw 
just going to paint it that she goes through yeah there's a diagonal timber I didn't put in so there's the thought I've done, I sketched the essentials but when you come and to paint it you may notice like I've just noticed there's a little bit missing it's very easy to come to that and because but everything again is drying so quickly out here I can just go over that now with a pencil leave it a couple of more minutes draw in what I missed and uh, make sure that you produce as accurate an interpretation as possible. Um, just a few more colours, we're nearly there. There's some um, planters on the window ledges up here in terracotta, in they go. We've got shadows in between here, there's a basically a, a galleried sort of balcony or a recess in here and all this goes in darker so we just put we want to put some shadows in between the timbers here and here and here and I'm just painting blues and browns there we are put a little brown in just to create some shadow and we're ready, ready I've left a gap so I wasn't sure whether I was going to include this um, this tree. Actually, there's a timber here I haven't uh, drawn, so again I'll paint it and I'll draw around that in a minute, so it looks the same as the rest of the of the um, comes across a bit further. Oops, picked up the wrong colour there. That's an easy mistake. yellow came from anyway a tissue up it comes or if it doesn't come off we just adjust that and make it browner there we go nice brown timber there and so just to complete it I'm going to put in some of the lemony very bright green uh, leaves on this tree and what I'm doing is I'm mixing up a puddle of a lemony shade of green I'm going to dry my brush off from the same color but then pick it up again and what the, that enables me to do hang on just mixing it up a bit greener to do a sort of stippling I'm going to bring that tree on a little bit but we stipple and so we can get this brush slightly splitting that's why I squeezed it a bit drier so it's not totally dry it's just drier and that enables the brush to split and produce groups of leaves or supposedly groups of leaves with very little effort and I'm just going to go slightly greener by adding my cyan blue or cold blue so I just dot into what I've just done with some slightly greener shades and if you're painting a tree where you can, especially in spring, where you can still see lots of um, branches, it might indicate some other buds coming up the other side over here. Well, I've got that colour, got it to sort of tie the painting together. Just bring the trees on by a week, or a couple of days probably. Um, and then when that's dry, we then put the twigs and the branches into the spaces. So it's a, it might seem to be the wrong way round. But actually, it's it's much easier to put the foliage in, and then you won't make the mistake of doing too many branches for the foliage. So now I can produce some brownie grey. Just getting some water to reduce my palette. There we go. And actually, just to refresh the palette, tip away some of the excess colour. And now using the tip of this brush, I can come through the gaps with some, with some branches and just join these up. Again, this sort of weaving technique where you go from one group to the next group, carry on. And you only need a few of these branches coming through. And it's much easier to create a sort of wispy, semi-bare tree or newly leafing tree. 
with a few strokes like so just going for the spaces that you've left having stippled in your foliage. You can even paint a few on top of the foliage because occasionally you'll see a bit more twig in front of some groupings that are behind. And you'll create depth in your trees if you do this. You're missing out some and you're painting over some and you're you're getting the illusion of a tree in front of the building. And again having left a space for that that worked. I could have painted that before and painted the building through like I did with the rest of the landscape but it's a great way of deciding whether you want to put the tree in at the end. I left the gap that gave me the option. So now it's just a question of getting my pencil out again and painting around the pieces I forgot. This timber here. You can also paint and uh, sorry draw in a few more twigs with the pencil. Don't have to do it all with a brush. Check whether there's anything missing. Bit of reflection down here. I think we're nearly there. Last bit of detail. Um, there's a little bit of reflection down in here. A slightly dark reflection in here and here. Perhaps from this. And a bit more reflection of the bridge. And that's it for a sketch.